Hey everyone, today on Fan Service, we've got an awesome guest in the studio. It's Nathan Noyes, or also known as Nathan Felix, who just wrote a symphony. We've got an awesome 10 things list for an over the top movie, plus more game storming. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned to this episode of Fan Service.
All right, so you just heard a piece of the Curse the Cross MLI, and I always get the Curse and the Cross mixed up, by Nathan Felix. <laughs> How are you, Nathan? Welcome to the show. Good. Thank you for having me. I, we've met months ago through the Cinematic Symphony, and they told me, hey, he's doing the symphony. Talk to him. And so we sat down, and we just had a good time, and we listened to the symphony. And if you haven't noticed, it is the Curse, the Cross, and the Lion. This comes out, what does it come out? Tuesday, November 5th. Tuesday, November 5th. All right, so that's this week. That is. People will go pick it up. So tell me a little bit about this symphony. So this is actually inspired um, by the movie Trick or Treat, which I love. <laughs> see? <laughs> see? Well, give me five. Right on. Um, People have good taste here. <laughs> do go on. Well, it is a cinem it's cinematic. It's, uh, it took eight years to sort of teach myself how to eight write years? music. Yeah, eight years. A long, long, long road. Before Long you journey. got started, had you ever written something along these lines? Nothing close to it. I was playing punk music and writing three chord. Ask really? him what the punk time. band was. <sighs> what was the punk band? I'm not going to talk about the punk <laughs> band. <laughs> well, it's okay that you don't want to talk about this because this sounds fan freaking tastic. Uh, while we were listening to the music video, I was varied to what I thought should be going on. It's like, this is a chase scene, isn't it? Um, so, out of curiosity, like, did you watch the movie first and then come up with everything, or was this before the movie? Well, it's, it's sort of simultaneously written to a story that I came up with, and I started writing the music loosely based on that. And then the music sort of just took precedent, and mm -hmm. the story's sort of lagging right now, but I'll, I'll sort of finish that based on the music now. Okay. But, um, but yeah, it's cinematic. I, I just thought of sort of childhood dreams that I had of, you know, being in some sort of situation where you have to be a superhero or you have to fight, you know, fight the evil villain. So. Right? Who doesn't, who doesn't dream about that? I, I mean, Chris Rachel. What? <laughs> You dream of kitchen stuff. I also dream. I had a cape on recently. Oh, you did. We could totally be like the fan service superhero squad. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have tryouts. I think that he gets to be the villain. I think that we just got to do, do some two-faced yeah, going on. Yeah, he'd have to there. totally be the villain. I was talking to my wife earlier on the way here about being a villain. and so, Or she said, you're the villain of sort of classical music because... <laughs> That yeah. would be a great way to market yourself. That's right, baby. I'm, I'm the villain of classical music. So what is the general story behind the curse to cross the line? So it's very general and loose right now, but it's, it's, it's a basic story of good versus evil. Um, and really, this symphony, I want people to listen to it, enjoy it, and sort of make up their own story. Um, I don't Which want is to easy it. to do, actually. And sort of, yeah, get lost in the music. And, mm -hmm. and instead of, you know, when you hear sort of um, themes from Star Wars, or other movies, you already have the images in your head, so you sort of... They're very iconic. Yeah. They, they are. They're not up for interpretation. Like, you hear Imperial March, you know what you're seeing Darth Vader walk. These right. days, if I hear that, I assume I'm at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this one, basically you have a, a almost a cinematic soundtrack that you can create your own story to and get lost in it and have your own adventure and it can go anywhere. And when I come up with a story, you know, that'll be a, something else, you know, a, a new... So, I hear to help you make the symphony, you made action figures. Really? That, that's true. I, you know, I should have brought the action figures. <laughs> that would have been awesome, actually. I don't know actually. why I didn't. So, you were playing out the symphony while you decided to make it. Well, the action figures as... It's okay. We all play with toys around here. You don't have to be like, well, they're, they're not dolls. They're action figures, and they were just there. We get it, really. <laughs> I, I love toys. Um, no, the music, as it sort of started to develop, I thought, well, why not sort of... You know, the movie always comes up first, and the music, then all the other merchandise. And I thought, why not go backwards, have the music, then sort of, in some wild idea, you know, create these sort of toys and that go along to the characters, the themes in the symphony. So called up an artist here in town, and he sculpted up some things for me. So you were telling me earlier that it's a kind of medieval setting. What do these action figures look like? Well, in my mind, it's partly medieval, but for everyone else, it can be It modern, could have been a maybe. European chase scene. Yes, so. Mm -hmm. You know. They were fighting over cake, you know, whatever. But what was your question? <laughs> I, I told what you what you What do your action like? figures look like? Oh, so um, they're sort of based off, uh, you know, there's a lion, mm -hmm. so it's hence the name Curse Cross Lion. Then there's evil, there's death, you know, there's life and stuff like that. So, again, the, the whole good versus evil story. So, Do you ever just sit them down and play with them? Not there's, necessarily in the tub, but, you know, like um, I, over I dinner. I only play in the tub with them. <laughs> See, that's the only way you can really play these days. Get the bubbles going, put your action figures on. We're going to act out this symphony. You're going to go this way and chase them, yeah. Which is so why we fun. don't let him film from home. Yeah, it, it would not be pretty. So you've also been really busy with this symphony. You've been to California. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> California. That's far <laughs> away. 
all the, well, yeah, it is from here. I saw all the pictures of the symphony recording it that you were sending out. So the symphony was recorded in New York. Uh -huh. um, I've spent some time in California recently, yes, sort of promoting it, talking to agents and, and that sort of thing. I also went to Bulgaria. Okay, that actually is that, a valid. I know it was away. far away somewhere, but the first thing that came out of my mouth was California. I was one letter off, forgive me. I, I went to Bulgaria not, or not to play any of these or have an orchestra perform this piece. But based off this piece, they accepted me to write a new piece. So oh, it's, wow. it's sort of helping, you know, develop you know other parts of life as a composer. So, so most punk artists don't go. You know what I'm going to do? Spend eight years on a symphony. Exactly. What made you decide that you were going to go from just you know playing a couple a couple of instruments to conducting an entire symphony? Um, well, not personally conducting it, but writing everything for. There's a lot of instruments. There's more than four. Yeah, you know, that's sort of a big jump now that I think about it from yeah. punk. So, cause I, uh, there's no one real thing. I think that I wanted the challenge, mm -hmm. and I heard this music in my head touring in a punk band, and we would just... So you're standing there, everyone else is like, rah, 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 rah. And you're you know like, what I hear? Close. It was more after the show, <laughs> we'd be at each other's throats. You sure that wasn't just the ringing in yours after the show? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, it could have been that, actually. Some high harmonies. Um, no, we, we were really upset at each other, and we were at each other's throats and really mad. Imagine being 60 days in a van with mm -hmm. three other people. Imagine being an hour show each week with other people. <laughs> That's true. I'm amazed that murder doesn't happen on a regular basis. I know. So 60 days in a van. Yeah, and so towards the end, you just don't want to talk to anyone. You don't want to you know, have anything to do with anyone in the van. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'd turn on the radio station, classical music, and it would calm us down, calm me down in particular. And I started to hear these arrangements in my head, and I thought, i, I got to do that. I don't, it just sort of gravitated towards it. And what made you decide to go with a more cinematic style with something like that? Because a lot of classical composers really shy away from it because they consider it too commercial. Yeah, you know, um, I just went with what I loved. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously as I've, I had never really listened to any classical music beforehand. And now that I've sort of listened to more, I think my second symphony is definitely going to be a lot more mature. Mm -hmm. Not saying this isn't mature, but just I'll be able to look back and say, oh, look, this is where I was musically mm -hmm. and, and see, see myself grow. And I'm really proud of that. But, um, yeah, I... This one, I wanted to get out everything that, as a child, that I loved, mm -hmm. and so hence the, you know, superheroes and the and the good versus evil basic story, and and this, yeah, was was that opportunity. The one on here that I really, really loved and was told the time is the funeral montage. It was just so different, and it just, it actually, it sounded like straight from the heart. How did you come up with that one? That's funny because the song In My Heart, you would think, came straight yeah. from my heart. But, um, funeral Mod, how did I come up with that? Well, I needed the track to, I needed a movement to finish it. Well, it was a great, <laughs> great way to finish the symphony. I mean, it's moving. Because one of my favorite things is that last 10 minutes of like a Disney film where that music just swells up and goes. Don't roll your head at me. I'm not. I'm trying You're to like, look at him. <laughs> um, and this is, it had that perfect finish to this just already epic score that, I mean, everyone that's listened to it has just loved it. Well, that's funny. I, you know, I sort of wrote it in sequential order, so I guess by that time, you know, I sort of had more experience writing and more experience flushing my ideas out, so that could be part of it. But, um, you know, that at that point, I was sort of delirious, too, because... <laughs> I was ready it does to have a this. touch yeah. of insanity to it. I think that's also why I <laughs> latched onto it so well. Um, when eight years is a long time to spend on any artistic project, what were you doing as an actual day job during that time to pay the rent? I, don't, I didn't really like paying rent at that <laughs> time. Most musicians don't, I find. Um, that's a good question. You know, I don't really remember much from that time in my life. I only remember staying up till four in the morning every day or every so night. So everything else is just a blur. Yeah, you know, I know I did some things. Um, I don't remember. I think maybe I was, I would think I was very fortunate to have a few songs from my band in some commercials and stuff like that mm -hmm. that sort of helped me get by. Um, but yeah, I probably did odd, odd jobs here and there. Okay. So, that well, sounds sketchy, right? Now that this, <laughs> now that you are done with this and it comes out on Tuesday, what do you want to do now? Like, do you want to start writing another musical? Do you want to start? Have you already like, started writing another one? Well, first thing I want to go, I want to go to California. <laughs> my first thing. I'm just laughing because <laughs> someday, um, Gavin. Someday I'm going to get my locations correct. <laughs> so I wanted to perform now. That's the the next step is to have this perform. But yes, I already have um, an offer to 
to record the second symphony. Really? Next Congratulations. Year. Yeah, thank you. I, it's really exciting. Um, the How do you get an offer to write another symphony? Because symphonies aren't something that I think people are like, you know what I really need? I, I need a symphony. Yeah. Well, I was fortunate to meet the conductor who mm -hmm. conducted this piece, um, Andre Lusada. I got to send out my props to him because he's really been a you know a crucial element of you know how these things are getting done. And, and so he took a chance on me for this mm -hmm. one, and it worked out so well. That, so now he said, let's you know up the ante, you know a bigger orchestra, a uh, better orchestra. Nothing against this is an amazing orchestra. Yeah. And just everything to the next level, and so bigger concert hall to record. Wow. And so we're going to do it next year in Baltimore, and I'm 75% done with the second one, and it also is going to have a 100-piece choir. So. <laughs> wow. wow. Got like, you got didn't it. have your busy enough time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just some it vocals as we go. With that, right? <laughs> yeah, very subtle. So, um, but yeah, and, and I, think it's, uh, I think it's the best work that I've done so far in my life. So. That's fantastic. I love it when what you feel like whatever your current project is is the best work you've ever done. Yeah. Yes. Well, I also think it's because you're doing something that you love, and a lot of people, they just find themselves trapped in cubicles and corporate jobs, and they're not happy. They'd be made, making all sorts of money, but until you're following your dream, you never know what real happiness is. Well, I think that regardless if you're in a cubicle or not, you can still be following your dream, so I wouldn't. If your dream is to be an office jet lackey, you know, like <laughs> an office space. Well. Or in the evenings, you could be putting things together and aspiring towards someday in eight years from having your own symphony. See. It took eight years, so and, and remember, it started when I was in a van trapped with yeah. three other people I didn't want to be with, just thinking about it. So, so is your wife happy that these eight years are finally over? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, good, you can move on to something else. I'm tired of this. Yeah, she's very supportive, and bless her heart, I probably bring a lot of stress in her life. But I think she's... But she gets to go to California. That's and right. And if you're going that far, you got to hold on to a guy. So... You, you love music. Who is your favorite cinematic composer outside of yourself? Because you can't totally talk about yourself. Oh, I, <laughs> I have too many, but I, you know, I love, um, I love Bernard Herrmann. He's okay. my favorite. Um, all Hitchcock films. Mm. But I started on Danny Elfman. That's where I started. Don't we all? Right? Danny Elfman's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, He's just 100% awesome. Danny Elfman's just all over. And he him. also started in a band. That's right. Because he was with Oingo Boingo, and mm -hmm. then it was like, what, you want me to make movie, music for your movie? Sure, I don't why not? So I'm not any good at this. No, he actually turned him down the first time, and they had to be really? talked into it. Well, I'm glad he got talked to him, because he does amazing work. Have you listened to his symphony, the Paranoia Schizophrenia one? Mm, I've heard a lot of his stuff. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's what he not. did like you did. He woke up one day saying he wanted to write a symphony. It's called like Paranoia Schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. It is really good, too. I probably heard some of it, yeah. It is. I was like, he wrote a symphony? That's why I think I liked you so much. I was like, he wrote a symphony, too. This should be interesting. I'm, I know he's doing the tour right now. I don't know. I, I don't think he's coming through Texas. Where why not? We're doing well, we're Texas. <laughs> Let's yeah. face facts. <laughs> it's still, it's, it's amazing how a lot of these very cinematic feels, it's amazing how these cinematic feels can get you. Because um, really, when listening to this, I mean, when we were watching the video earlier, I was literally narrating, like, I, here's what I think is happening in this scene. And I really love being able to hear music that is non-vocal, that you know what's happening when mm -hmm. you hear it. You can really visualize it. And you've done a stunning job with that. Well, thank you. Thank you. So this comes out Tuesday. Where can people pick it up? So Tuesday, it's released sort of world, worldwide. You can stream it on Spotify, or you can get it on iTunes. You can actually pre-purchase it on iTunes today. Um, the CD is available, will be available at Wa Waterloo, and the vinyl at Waterloo as well. Or you can sort of email me, ask me for a copy, and I'll... Can they pick know. it up off of Amazon or anything like that? It's, a, it's on Amazon, physical copies you can order on Amazon. I mean, you can find it anywhere and everywhere. Everywhere you want to be, there's awesome music, is what he's saying. So, you can hit him up at thecursethecrossthelion.com. They will be able to find your everything about this symphony there, including, I'm guessing, places to buy it. And they can follow you and see what's coming next. That's right. And you said earlier that you really hope that people would be able to make up their own scenes. Are you encouraging any sort of social media participation that way of people sending you photos or doing image oh, manipulations or anything like that of what they envisioned with it? Yeah. You know, my wife had the idea of sort of throwing it out there to people to sort of create their own video uh -huh. um, and content like that. It doesn't have to be the full movements, but just sort of 30 minute, 30 second minute clips. So mm -hmm. yes, eventually, I think right now, just so overwhelmed on trying to, you know, properly release oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But I, I would love, or we would love that sort of interaction. Mm -hmm. with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been dying to make a music video, you've got a <laughs> great idea, and you just hear it in your head or see it in your head when you, when you hear this, upload it to a site It'll or put it on YouTube and send him a link. A good deal of fun. So, thanks for coming out, Nathan. It's been yeah. a long road getting here, and I'm glad we made it finally. Finally. Uh, 
And congratulations. This Very is really so. excellent work. Oh, if, you. if you're gonna spend eight years on something, this is the thing you should have when you're done. Yes. So best of luck with the CD. I can't wait to hear what you have in store next. Oh, you guys will be kept up to date <laughs> with everything. All right, well, we're definitely gonna get you on show for the next one too.